Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So hope everybody had a great uh, week of trading. Some really good uh, developments, some constructive developments have uh, taken part, uh, especially in the last couple of days. We'll get to the ramifications uh, for the new week. But again, if you are uh, brand new to the channel or just a loyal uh, follower, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, all I ask is, again, if you like the content, um, I try to base all my um, opinion on data, okay? I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. Um, I go where uh, I believe has the highest value uh, and the security of capital, right? The preservation of capital, uh, if possible. So if you like uh, what we're doing or continuously like what we're doing, all I ask is please uh, take a moment, uh, like the video, uh, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And hopefully again, I will continue to do my best uh, to uh, you know, kind of point you in the right direction. So I, I didn't trade Friday. Okay, Friday I was uh, in Atlantic City. My son was in a, a couple day tournament, basketball tournament. I drove home. Um, so I really you know, couldn't get a good feel of the day. But at this point in my life, and I'm going again, I'm on my 25th year and going already my 26th year uh, for next year. So I kind of have a good understanding when I see kind of the final numbers, kind of see kind of how the the, the final um, formation has been set. And what's important is not the final numbers, right? If you look at the final numbers for the week, uh, nothing really is going to stand out for most of the indexes. You have the uh, Dow up 1.6%, uh, which is, again, great, all-time highs. Uh, S&P up about 1%. The NASDAQ uh, rose about two tenths of a percent. The the biggest eye dropper was the Russell up six percent for the week. Um, yeah, yeah, Russell up six percent for the week. Uh, not really my sweet spot. Not really uh, not my lane. But six percent is a pretty big deal. I'm not really sure what drove uh, what drove this uh, this index into uh, into orbit. Uh, but it's here. So a 6% move obviously really does still represent that the buyers will come in on anything, right? Well, anything, speculation money uh, is still alive and kicking and people are not afraid to chase, right? Chase uh, price action. You can see that. So a massive, massive move there. But I, I, I think what's important to identify what could potentially happen Monday or Tuesday is not from Friday's session, is from Thursday's session. So let's talk about that for a second. So we've been going on this linear move for a very long time. And if you've been watching video after video after video, I've been pretty much echoing the same thoughts pretty much every single day. And that was, don't chase anything that had a big move, right? You can go video after, literally video after video, because hey, again, this is the, the ramifications. I always say, don't jump out of the 12th floor. If you're going to jump, jump out of the first floor because again, if you miss on the first floor, yeah, then you'll have some bumps and bruises. You might even break a leg. But if you jump off the 12th floor and you're buying a stock that's 15, 20, 30, 40, 60% away from its breakout level, if it does pull and gravity is real, eventually you're going to have a severed head. And I've been talking about this for a very, very long time. And I kept on reiterating this one point that I think every single trader needs to understand. Stop anticipating, right? Stop anticipating where the top is going to be or where you think is the top is going to be. The easiest way to identify a reversal, and again, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is just wait for it to take out the previous day's channel, right? That was the key. Whether we were talking about the Qs uh, in general, whether we were talking about Tesla, right? Tesla, we've been talking about all the time. I, talk, I turned around and I'm like, you're, you're going to get this reversal in the next couple of days. We, we started in the beginning, we said that because the stock was in absolute orbit, right? When you have a hundred point move without a red candle, eventually you're going to have that reversal. It was just a matter of time. So it wasn't like Captain Obvious, what I'm talking about now, 
Well, there, Dan, everybody knew it was going to reverse. That's the whole point. Everybody did know it was going to eventually reverse. But my point was, I don't want to guess when it was going to reverse. Well, let's just wait for it to take out the previous day's channel, and then we could get a clear backside entry. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and this is kind of what we segue into what potentially could happen on Monday. So here was Thursday's pivots, right? Here was Thursday's pivots. Obviously, I'm always, I'm always um, ready for both sides of the market. Uh, you know, some of these stocks did very well. We had, you know, a nice gapper uh, on Nvidia overnight and blah blah blah. GameStop never confirmed. Chewy, uh, nice move. If you guys remember, we've been talking about Chewy uh, for the whole for the whole week. Just watch this thing. There's some call buying coming in. So that 26 number. Uh, was important, right? It was important to reclaim back the 10-day moving average. It went to like 27 and change uh, this week, but that's not really the significance of my point here. Here is kind of where we started the day, right? And like I said, you know, like I said in all the videos, I believe that Tesla was going to give us a backside trade. I believe that Tesla, it was a gravity play had nothing to do about fundamentals now that we had uh, some really good um, momentum news uh, on the fundamental side, the narrative and the sentiment in the stock has changed. The only thing we were talking about is just let's capitalize on a potential losing of the previous day's range and we could get a move. And finally it happened. And these are, you know, this was my point, you know, just be ready for it. And it doesn't necessarily have to happen the day that you are looking for a reversal, but at least be prepared. So here are my notes. 257.86. I didn't just randomly grab the number out of thin air. 257.86. If it builds below, can flush. You never know when it finally loses the. Again, here is the point the previous day's range, right? Always need to be prepared. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Tesla just got smoked, just absolutely smoked. Uh, here is the previous day's range 257.86. This is where we got it. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal swan dive. As it was about to confirm, you had, they were coming for the 250 puts, the 245 puts, the 240 puts. So you started seeing a, a snowball effect on um, on the put side. And again, again, people weren't anticipating. They even thought that news was coming or they were getting prepared for the previous day's range. And as the stock confirmed, you saw that news come out that the, ter that the taxi the robo taxi was going to be delayed only a couple of years. But in this type of environment, when a stock is in orbit, when a stock is in Pluto, it doesn't take a lot for the stock to, to lose the previous day's range. And this is massive. You know, 257 went all the way down to 239. Uh, after hours, next day went down to 233. So just a an absolute phenomenal move. And not only did you have Tesla, right? You had a lot of names doing the same thing. And if we weren't prepared for it, we would have never thought, we would have never caught these things. They would have been never on our radar. So once we started seeing the market getting heavy and we started seeing NVIDIA lose previous day's range, we started seeing Meta lose previous day's range. I started to turn around, I, I turned around, I go, well, let's watch Apple. Let's watch uh, uh, Tesla. Let's watch Microsoft. And Microsoft, again, ex another example, 467.70 is the three-day range, right? Excuse me, that was to the upside. Sorry, there's going to be an upside channel in a second here. Uh, Rivian gave a nice move. Uh, 16.75 needs to confirm. Again, here's a nice two-day move on Rivian, right? Rivian traded all the way up to uh, 19. Beautiful move there. Congratulations for you guys who are holding. Um, blah, 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 blah. A 201, 20 big level still on Amazon. Again, they're still trying to clean up uh, Bezos, Right, they're still trying to clean up Bezos uh, to the upside. They haven't done uh, done that yet. Uh, but here is kind of here is kind of where we started identifying more pivots back to the downside. So Microsoft 458. That's been the lowest for the last two days. They basically held 458 twice. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Microsoft. Huge, huge move here. So here was Microsoft. Here is again the whole channel here. You see that. It held 458 once, twice, held the 10-day moving average. Once it lost the 458, it traded all the way down to the 450, 451 area. Really, really strong move on Microsoft. And once we started seeing all these stocks, NVIDIA, Meta, the Qs lose the previous day's range, we started to start putting one pivot after the other. Uh, and here was Apple, 229 and a quarter. Uh, if it builds below, can flush, right? Here was Apple. 
Here's the 229 and a quarter. That was the previous range. Again, that's the whole point. It was the previous range low. It lost the 229 and a quarter and went all the way down to the 2570s. So here's our kind of our, our thinking, or at least my thinking, going into this, this new week and going into Monday, right? So Friday, we had a bounce back day, okay? We had a bounce back day. The problem with Friday's day, and again, I'm always trying to be prepared on both sides. I'm always trying to play devil's advocate. I don't just believe that everything is all good, okay? And in both sides of the market, okay? I'm always looking, I'm always understanding the, the price appreciation or the de depreciation, the formation of the channel w within the previous day. And what you'll notice the previous day, because we had this massive, massive uh, sell, well, at least sell off on Thursday. On Friday, it created an inside day, okay? What an inside day is basically, especially for new traders who are uh, brand new to technical analysis, inside day just basically means it didn't take out the previous day's high and it didn't take out the previous day's low. However, the fact that it couldn't take out the previous day's low is kind of a big deal. It really is because what happens is when you're putting in an inside day, that means it's just a rest day from the previous day's price action. The previous day's price action was very violent and we tested the rising 10 day support this becomes a massive massive area going into monday session right and what you'll notice is we'll get through some charts in a second what you'll notice is a lot of stocks either mirrored what we saw in the queues putting in inside day or you saw a lot of big names also break below the previous day's channel overall this is not a good thing so the bulls need to, and you know, going into this week, write down these numbers. So the bulls need to get back above 500 on the queues. That's 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 100 percent because what, what's going to happen is if they could get back above 500, that's also going to reclaim the five day moving average. Okay, which is going to be obviously a short term sentiment boost to the bulls. However, the flip side, because of this inside day, because this one candle took out literally four days worth of buying. This three four ninety seventies level right now in the queues is an enormous level, guys. Because again, if they lose the ten day moving average, the whole point of the PS sixty theory is stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So if the bulls can't defend the ten day moving average, and we start losing and confirming Thursday's price action of four ninety seventies. Yeah, we're going to go down all the way back down to the 20 day, which is roughly 486. Now, again, if, if you're an investor, my, my channel has no value to you, okay? Because you're looking right now and you're like, oh, rolling your eyes. So what's the big deal? We're active traders, okay? I'm not, it's not an investment channel, okay? We're active traders. We trade both sides of the market. My value is not based on three weeks from now where I think Tesla is going to be a year from now. My value is what happens next day long, short, or indifferent, that's where I'm trying to set up. So the idea that somebody's looking at this channel and go, oh, what's the big deal? Even if the queues get down to 486, it's not a big deal for you because you're an investor. For us, who are active traders and we're very active in the market, it's a very big deal because we could take advantage of price action. So 490.72 is obviously the line in the sand going into this week. And for the bull case, we need to get back above 500 on the queues. So if you look at a lot of names, you'll see exactly what I'm referring to. Let's look at Tesla, right? Tesla did a pretty good job on Friday, right? Did a pretty good job on Friday. It had this massive sell-off. Again, congratulations. We basically caught about 10 points on this thing, about a three, four-minute range, which was great. Um, the point is, it did reclaim back the 10-day moving average. So now it's faced with the same scenario is kind of mirroring the cues. They need to get back above the five-day moving average and reclaim because if they could get back above the five-day and reclaim, they are probably going to go back uh, and test the highs. However, there is a flip side. If we lose back the 10-day moving average and lose this whole bottom channel, confirming one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of buying and engulfing that seven days of buying, then yes, Tesla will have uh, more downside to the 220, 221 area. So again, we know our levels. That's the whole point of going into every single day understand your levels. Again, there's a flip side to this. There are names that price depreciated the previous day, right? Here's an example. Meta lost the whole engulfing channel and went lower. Google lost the whole engulfing channel and went lower. So we have a scenario going into next week, or at least Monday and Tuesday, that it's pretty important that the bulls reclaim back the five-day because if not, 
Uh, again, we've been such on a, such a big magic carpet ride that it doesn't take a lot for an extended sell-off. It doesn't matter. Again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's just, it's just kind of reality. Stocks just don't go straight up. So when I was talking about Tesla for the last you know week or so and say, look, it's it, it, it's in the next day or so, a couple of days or so, we are going to get a back test. It's an orbit. And you start to say, well, no, the stock is going to go to 300. Maybe it does. And I listen, God bless. I hope it does. But the point is, it's not going to go up in a straight line. And that's the whole point. We're not trying to call a top on Tesla. This isn't a top. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it's a pregnant pause. And when you have a linear market that's so strong, you're going to get the gravity effect. You're going to have the ability to trade an aggressive pull because gravity is real. Nothing goes straight up. And if, you, if you're not careful, again, again, here is the breakout on Tesla. Here is the breakout. Now you're jumping here off the fifth floor, the seventh floor, the 12th floor. Here, you jumped off the 35th floor. What do you think is going to happen? Eventually, you will get pulled. So again, the further a stock goes away from its breakout area, the higher probability you're going to have a really, really aggressive pull when it loses the previous day's range. And that's exactly all it was, was losing a previous day's range. We knew the levels, we were prepared for the levels, and the most important part is, again, we're not tied into our opinion. If we're wrong in our research, we're wrong in our research, we could always trade the other side of the market, but do yourself a favor. Understand your levels before you're entering the, the arena, entering the Coliseum, because if not, you are going to have a really big problem on your hands. So going into the next week, again, let's see. We had technical damage on Thursday, inside day on Friday. Let's see what the bulls can do, right? You know, maybe it's back to business this week. We start reclaiming back the five-day moving average and going forward. If not, bears reclaim back the 10-day and the narrative just changes. Uh, earnings season is coming, is coming up. It feels like earnings season was just here like 10 seconds ago, but apparently uh, we are back in earnings season, uh, kicking off, I think, this week or next week, this week. Uh, with technology names, let's see what has to offer. But the point is, guys, and I don't care if you're trading for 10 weeks, 10 years, or anything in between, know your levels, play both sides of the market, and don't be naive that something has to happen when you want it to. Trade the market that you have, not the market you want. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great weekend, and with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday.